All right, the final thing that I want to teach you guys in this sixth lesson is what is called the box diagram. The box diagram is a tool that I learned from uh, Dr. Ernie Baker at the Masters University during my time there. And it is my favorite counseling uh, diagram that I use. And what the box diagram intends to do is help the counselor to draw out the counselee so that as Proverbs 20 verse 5 talks about, wisdom is used to draw out the purpose in a man's heart. Proverbs 20 verse 5 says that the purpose in a man's heart is deep waters. And so uh, a man of understanding draws out that purpose, those purposes that are in the heart. And so this is just a tool that's used to do that. Uh, I'll just walk you through uh, piece by piece what this diagram is intended to do uh, in each of the elements included in it. The box diagram, not a very original title. It's a box. And so in that box, you have from the left bottom left corner to the top right corner, the box being split in half. On the upper side of that line, you have a tree which represents the outer life, uh, things that are on the surface, the fruit being born in someone's life from what's on the underside of that division in the box, which is the roots under the tree. That's representative of the inner life, the heart, and everything that happens in the heart. And so... The, the good or bad fruit being born on the outside is the result of what's happening beneath the surface, just like in our lives. Everything that we see, the wellsprings of life, as Solomon calls it in Proverbs 4.23, uh, or the sin that is manifested in life, as Jesus talks about in Mark chapter 7, verses 21 to 23, all of those things happening in our lives on the outside are manifestations of what is truly going on in the inside. And so with that in mind, you have the different components of the outer life. So the situation, which is usually things happening outside of our control. That's why you got a uh, sun up here at the top of the diagram. The sun... Uh, pressure, the heat of life, if you will, uh, affects our lives and causes what's beneath the surface to, to sprout, to grow, to bear fruit. And so just the situation, you could actually just put this and the way I use this in counseling is I'll just teach a counselee exactly what I'm what I'm doing in this lesson, I'll draw the box on the board and I'll just draw it out in front of them. And as I'm drawing it, I'm explaining uh, what what I'm drawing. And so the situation, there are four different sides of this box. At the top, where the sun is, you have the, just the situational elements. So my marriage is difficult. Uh, I have this or that trial happening in my life. Here are some situational things that went on. And this is what the person said to me, for example, in this given situation that we're talking about. Just situational elements are going at the top. The other side of the outer life, the left side of the box, is the reactions and responses of the person. So whenever uh Life brings pressure. Uh, the pressure, the various pressures of life occur um, on us. Then pressure is seeking a release. Pressure seeking a release. And so this would be on here. The reactions or responses are the ways that the person is coping with whatever pressures of life they have. Uh, these are the ways that they are responding to whatever God is providentially bringing 
into their lives. If it's sin, these are the sinful uh, responses that are happening, that are manifesting in the per person's li life. And as you talk with a counselee, you can just ask questions. Okay, what's the situation? What happened then? What happened next? And just jot those things down uh, if you give yourself some space, more space than we see here. But you would just start taking notes. And I'll show a couple examples of, of when I've actually done this, uh, real pictures after a counseling session that uh, that I've utilized. And so you would just jot notes there and then you would say, okay, how did you respond? How did you react? What did you do next? All of those things. <clears throat> All of those things, excuse me, will go on the left side then of the diagram under reactions and responses. And this isn't linear. It's not like first you do the situation, then you do the responses, then you move on. You'll keep circling this and, and probably bouncing around as you collect more and more data about what's going on with the counselee. On the right and bottom side of this graph, this diagram, the inner life represented again by the root system underneath the tree, you have some functions of the heart. So these are the thinking, the thoughts, the attitudes. How is this person thinking? When that happened, what did you think? Uh, what went through your mind then? What was your attitude when these situational things happened. And also the wants or desires. What were you wanting to accomplish in that moment? What were you uh, intending to, to produce in that other person, right? If you responded in anger, what were you wanting your anger to do? Uh, and then you would start taking notes there. So this would be things that people value, um, idols usually appear here uh, in the heart, things that they are wanting more than anything else. Ideally, uh, a counselee who is thinking rightly and biblically and in keeping with the glory of God, what were you wanting in that moment? I was wanting God to be glorified. That's what we would love to see go down here. But if that was the case, they probably wouldn't be there for counseling. That is rarely the case, but those are the things that you are going to jot down down here. And as this fills out, one of the fun aspects of doing this real time is that you never really know what you're going to get. As you are taking notes, uh, preferably on a whiteboard where the counselee can see it, then you're just filling this out and praying for discernment to accurately interpret the data. And as you start seeing uh, things formulate here in your notes, then you should be thinking through passages of scripture uh, that will help you diagnose what's happening in the counselee's heart. And so that's what Proverbs 20 verse 5 means when it says, but a man of understanding, that is God's understanding, God's knowledge, God's wisdom, when a man possesses that, is able to do what only God can do and draw out the purposes of the heart. I want to show show you a, a couple different examples of when I have actually uh, used this in counseling sessions. This first diagram, you can see the whiteboard. This is a, just a picture of a whiteboard here at Grace Bible Church where I was doing the counseling. And same deal, not nearly as neat. You can see my, my drawing, but we got through each of these categories and this was us working through it, not for very long at all. But this counseling situation uh, in particular was a guy who engaged in some, uh, I don't even remember what they called. He was a, an athlete who did lots of running, uh, bicycling, swimming, um, whatever race that is, a competition that is, when all of those things come together. And uh, this guy had experienced falling asleep in the middle of a race. So he's running and he can't figure out 
why he's actually dozing off. And it was just completely bizarre. And as you can imagine, caused him no small degree of angst. Um, and so in s- successive races, he's run, uh, wondering, am I going to fall asleep again? And so some of the thoughts that he was having, wondering why he's falling asleep, uh, is this worse than the last time? Uh, oh no, I'm in the point at a point in the race where I'm alone. Uh, what if I actually dozed off and you know something terrible happened to me in between the time somebody found me and I dozed off? Those types of thoughts were going through his mind. Um, and then still wanted to be competitive, so he had even other thoughts like a poor time is unacceptable. I got to do my best. This would be terribly embarrassing. And so those led to those types of thoughts uh, led to the desires um, and and even revealed what he was wanting. He wanted to finish the race. He wanted to know things like he <laughs> that he wasn't going to die. He wanted that type of assurance. Uh, wanted to see his family at the finish line. And so that difficult situation in this guy's life didn't impart things into his heart. We want to remember that the situational things don't give us bad thoughts or give us wrong desires. They merely draw out, just like the sun draws out of the root system, the heart, what is already there. Uh, producing whatever fruit are born as a result of what's inside of us. Um, and so as we as we work through this, some, some things after I get all of this on the board, uh, sometimes I, well, I'll always turn the corner and try and start working toward a solution. We'll look at scripture. In this case, we looked at Philippians 4, what the Bible talked about, anxiety, and discussed techniques, Ways to guard the mind, guard the heart, other thoughts that he needs to be considering in the midst of of the race and not being anxious about uh, things that aren't true. Obviously, in this case, you would want to get the counselee a a thorough physical, have him interacting with his medical doctors, which is not something that the the counselor is able to to deal with directly, mostly, uh, in most cases. And so sent him back to the doctor. You need to get a thorough uh, exam, um, get checked up, those types of things to make sure that you're actually, your body's functioning properly, biologically. Um, We talked about death and how the believer should be thinking about death um, if he was going to continue to engage in these types of, of sporting events. And one of the things that compelled this guy to seek counseling is because he had a race coming up and uh, several weeks away and didn't want to keep experiencing these things. And so this was a, actually a fun uh, fun counseling outcome, a beneficial one. He came back and, and shared that he did really well in the, in the following race and, and things went well and was really thankful for, for the instruction. And one more, again, same whiteboard. Much more involved. You see a lot more going on on this whiteboard. Uh, Here on the bottom right side of the whiteboard, this person, completely different situation. I wasn't even sure if I was counseling a believer. And so before all of this, we spent a lot of time on the gospel, walking through Romans chapters one through three. Uh, to understand uh, really everything that Paul works through from all men being sinners, those without the law, those with the law, and what God has done to rescue men from the wrath that they deserve that is abiding on them because of their suppression of the truth. And so after we walk through all of those things, getting all the way through to the cross and the resurrection of Christ, I had to explain and do a little bit more legwork on what the heart even is, what the biblical view of the heart is. And so here you have a a heart drawn with things that happen in the heart. The heart trusts and relies on things, understands, thinks, has intentions, purposes, emotions, desires, will, 
believes things. And after we walk through through this, this was in more than, than, than one session, obviously. But after we talked in this meeting about what the heart is, that it's the same as the soul, mind, spirit. It's the immaterial self. Then I showed him, I started teaching him the box diagram to help him to see if all of these things that we just talked about are happening in your heart, let's find out based on how your life looks and the fruit that are being born out of your struggling marriage. That was the situation, unhappy wife, struggling marriage. Um, what must be going on in your heart? Not what would you like to think is going on, but Based on the tangible evidence, the fruit, let's read backwards, so to speak, and see what's going on in your life. And so uh, here, we, the specific issue that we were dealing with, because his struggling part of his struggling marriage was that he had little to no engagement uh, with God's word. He knew he was supposed to be reading the Bible, but his excuse which he realized wasn't valid, was I just don't feel like it. I always find other things to do instead. And so we just examined when that's going on in the life, in your life, when you choose not to read God's word, when you would rather play sporting events or, or you know watch sporting events, uh, engage in politics, read the newspaper, peruse social media. What's, what's happening in the heart? Uh, what's going on? What are your thinking, attitudes, desires in your heart? Uh, I don't feel like it. You're thinking, oh, well, that's hard. Important, weighty things are hard to give attention to. That's not enjoyable, which you see the lie being told there, right? His heart's deceiving him. Hey, we don't feel like doing it. Uh, that's a good reason not to. That's too hard, right? Um, excellent things are worth striving after. Excellent things deserve labor, as uh, Thomas Watson says it. Things that he was desiring, ease, comfort. Proverbs 1 talks about the destruction that people who insist on having ease at all costs uh, rather than a fear of the Lord, the destruction that they encounter, um, and so laziness and, and a desire for ease was a part of uh, the poor fruit being manifested in his marriage. And so then we, we talked about passages that talk about not relying on your own wisdom from Proverbs 3, not relying on your own understanding from Psalm 19, how we should think about the word of God. And in this guy's life, what became evident and what I stressed in counseling was if you believe God, then what God says about his word and what God says about the importance of putting off ease for the sake of doing what you were created to do, know and glorify God, obey God, even in your marriage. If you are a believer, then you will do what believers do, and that is believe God. You will take him at his word when he tells us what is true about his word and you will believe that and engage with his word rather than submitting to your own desires and your own uh, foolish, foolish thoughts. And so that is uh, those are two examples of the way you might use a box diagram in counseling before I was ever encouraged or allowed to use this on other people with other people uh, I had to use it on myself and take a sin issue in my own life and do this and then come up with a plan for comprehensive change I would encourage anybody uh, who is considering using this in counseling to use it on your own heart first and, and, and you will know that it's helpful before you walk someone else through it hope that's helpful to you